City's Haiti Earthquake Relief Team has arrived in Port-au-Prince from the United States. Taiwan receives a first batch of BNT vaccines that will be available to teenagers as of mid-September. Welcome to Dad Headlines, I'm Jenny Lee. Thank you for joining us. The first city Haiti earthquake relief team has taken off from Los Angeles and New York and arrived in Port-au-Prince, Haiti on September 1st. They will conduct disaster relief work for 16 days and train local volunteers. The 250 boxes of instant rice and 100 zinc folding beds from Taiwan have also arrived in city Haiti campus. First city Haiti earthquake relief team has arrived in Port-au-Prince, Haiti on September 1st. This is my 79th time coming to Haiti. The 250 boxes of instant rice and 100 jinx folding beds airship on Taiwan also arrive at city Haiti campus. These are life-saving supplies much needed by the quake survivors. The disaster area is very large, including Les Cayas and Jeremy. In many remote regions, the quake survivors have a difficult time getting help. City volunteers work mindfully to print and deliver city's humanitarian aid logo stickers to Haiti. They also selected aid supplies with much consideration. We transported these logo stickers from Ziji U.S. headquarters to New York. Then volunteers used suitcases to bring them to Haiti. There are 10,000 stickers. This way, as quake survivors take aid supplies, they will know the supplies are from Ziji, forming a good affinity with Ziji. Haiti was struck by a massive earthquake 11 years later, in addition to the serious situation of the COVID pandemic. In Haiti, people who are suffering are waiting for outside help. I personally feel that coming here to help people who are suffering is the most meaningful thing in my life. City's Haiti Earthquake Relief Team is going to distribute aid supplies to 5,000 families on September 6th in La Case. Emergency relief work will continue until the end of October to help 30,000 earthquake-affected families. Kaohsiung Taoyuan District's indigenous representative Xie Yizhen was caught in a mud flow and is still missing. City volunteers made visits to Xie Yizhen's home, sending care to her family and five grandchildren. As of now, the children have problems paying school fees. Thus, City made a second visit. Maybe it's because I'm young. I can get out of the mud flow, and she had leg surgery before. After the efforts to rescue people from the mud flow, Xie Yizhen is nowhere to be found. For the rescue methods now, we ask PWB to cooperate with us. They used the backhoe to dig through the dirt. The rescue span over a month, yet there is no good news regarding Xie Yizhen's whereabouts. Sometimes Yizhen had to take care of children herself. They crawled everywhere. Xie Yizhen has three children and five grandchildren. Besides taking on the role of representative, she also has to help run a family restaurant, as her family isn't in a good economic situation. We don't know what to do. We don't know anything because Auntie did everything for us. She even looked after children by herself, so we all feel panicked. Losing the breadwinner of the family, Xie Yizhen can only be remembered through photos. She is no longer here, but we must cheer up ourselves. <laughs> Knowing that there are many family members, including children studying in school, city volunteers arrived for the second time. There are many children in the household. They really need help. <laughs> With love, no one will be alone, as volunteers will continue to accompany this family while they move on with life. 
days of pouring rain cut off the resource line to Kaohsiung's mountains, Taoyuan district. City volunteers send necessities to the township and computers to children so that they can cope with online classes. In addition, charity cards are issued to families. Worrying about the material getting wet, volunteers cover it with the canvas. In addition to the material box, there are also necessary tools that Siji wants to give children to use in the class. I didn't have a computer before, so I used the school's computer when I was in school. It's been two months I'm using the computers at school. As for receiving a new computer, there is also Zhang Huiting. Huiting's brother dropped out of school last year because his parents couldn't pay the tuition. This time, the volunteers will help Huiting continue her learning journey. She opened the box immediately after receiving the gift. I can use it to give a report when I go to middle school or university. This is the last time what I gave you the charity card. You can use it to buy the stuff you need in life. Mother She, who lives in Love Love Village, especially came to collect the charity card so that she could replenish daily supplies at any time and return to normal life soon. As the pandemic slowed, city volunteers visit care recipients before mid-autumn festival. Mr. Lan, who has mobile disability, worked hard to rehabilitate. After six months, Mr. Lan can now stand and walk. City volunteers also brought care packages to Ms. Gao to support her through the epidemic. It's been quite a while since volunteers meet Mr. Lan, as he is now demonstrating his progress. Half a year ago, volunteers visited Mr. Lan in the rain as he alone cannot walk out of his door, even needing to use a walker. After seven attempts, Mr. Lan received his driver's license. He hoped to buy an electric three-wheeled motorcycle, plus he eagerly did physical rehabilitation. The results didn't let volunteers down. He can kick both of his legs while sitting on a chair. As for standing, he needed an assistive device in the past, but now he doesn't need it. He can walk for at least five or six steps. It's been one year, a long time since I've seen you. You came at the right time. His thought of contributing has turned into the act of doing good deeds. I'm also very happy. Every one of you gave me so much encouragement. I'm thankful to everyone. Seeing her mother, Ms. Gao, felt emotional as she hasn't seen volunteers in a while. She never lacks necessary supplies during the pandemic. You really did humble charity work. This will make others feel that you are very considerate towards them. After experiencing the lows in life, Ms. Gao now has the ability to give back. If we needed sanitation workers, she is very professional in this field. She is also willing to come back to Ziji, providing services to others. I am very moved. As people felt emotional, volunteers are here to bring love, making sure no one is alone. According to the Control Yuan, more than 90 percent of elders with dementia in Taiwan receive care in their own homes. During COVID, this became a very heavy load for the family members, as home care needs to be around the clock. Today, we continue to pursue the plight of caregivers despite the challenges and risks. This nursing assistant has been working with this young boy, Tai, for more than a year. When more strangers visit this home, it's built up layers of defense. He still ignores this long-term nursing assistant, patiently tries to communicate with him. If plan A, B, and C fail, then switch to plan D. I just play nursery rhythms to stabilize his mood, otherwise he is very restless. Following the melody, Tai's little feet keep stopping and his tight face releases a smile. 
When I came into their house originally, he was shaking his whole body like this, and he would attack people when he saw them. As long as I approached him, he would pinch you and would undress himself and hit people. The laborers on both sides are very proud. They will call the child a devil or something like that, which will make you feel very distressed. A survey found that caregivers of the physically and mentally disabled are mostly parents. 75% of caregivers are mothers with no income or a monthly salary of less than 300 US dollars. Under the three level alert of the pandemic, they spend more time with their disabled children, but their degree of helplessness is as high as 80%. I need to take care of three children. When I'm so busy, a nursing assistant comes to look after my younger son so that I can do some more things with confidence. Of her three children, two of them has developmental impairments. She takes advantage of the time when the nursing assistant comes. She takes her youngest out for special rehab treatment. <laughs> When our nursing attendants goes into the home, our job is especially care for the particular case, but we also help the whole family because of the pandemic, the family income is reduced, and we have a relief subsidy we can provide from the Foundation to support the family. Pandemic prevention measures have the skewed balance of care for long-term care families. Fortunately, the home care service this year has greatly improved the physical and mental condition of this young boy. I come from Monday to Friday. At the beginning, he used to sway side to side, but now I use my feet to guide him, and he is making rapid progress. Now that he goes out, and his neighbor who also goes out to exercise will come over and will take the initiative to approach the child. You can see that the child feels that he is much happier and smiles. She has cognitive ability but not enough, so I will help reinforce her education. Because rehabilitation classes have been suspended, it is now long-term care workers assisting my daughter. When Aya was three and a half years old, I finally dared to let her to walk. I was very moved. The daughter needs the company of others around the clock with home care during the pandemic doubling. In the past, I would actually take her around to play or watch new things. Because of the pandemic, she has stopped these outing activities. As teacher Wu comes, they have the chance to go downstairs to take a walk. I was hit by a scooter, injuring my clavicle on the way to solve a home case. An operation was needed because it broke three pieces and four ribs were broken. The case family also cares about me and I care about them. Because this kind of relationship, I continue to take up this home care job. The bond between these nursing attendants and their cases includes communication without language as love surmounts these barriers, becoming a candlelight in the darkness. In the morning of September 2nd, a flight carrying 930,000 BNT vaccines arrived in Taiwan. CECC Commander Chen Shizhong, Cixi Foundation CEO Yan Wen, and a TSMC representative are at the scene to welcome the arrival of BNT vaccines. This batch will be provided to teenagers from 12 to 22 years old at the earliest mid-September. As the plane parked in the tarmac apron, Commander of CECC, Chen Shizhong led his team with thank you posters, welcoming the CV-7962 flight as it contains the first batch of BNT vaccines, a total of 930,000 vaccines. I want to express thanks to the vaccine provider from TSMC, Foxconn to Zhiji, and our team of lawyers. We have tried our best to overcome challenges. We have signed the contract. 
的困难，那把这个合约也签订。BNT vaccines are purchased by Zhiji Foundation, TSMC, and Yongling Foundation, buying a total of 15 million vaccines. The founder of Foxconn, Terry Guo, even went to Europe to speed up the process. We should thank BNT and Fosun Pharma for giving us support. This allows the first batch of vaccines to arrive one month earlier than the original ETA. The first batch of vaccines took a journey of 19 hours, departing from Luxembourg around September 1st, 12 o'clock Taiwan time, transferring at Azerbaijan, departing once more around 11 p.m., then arriving at Taiwan on September 2nd, 7 a.m., the batch of vaccines can be used until mid-January. Our two partners worked hard and with determination in order for us to have this achievement. I want to thank both both government units for their help, allowing students from the age of 12 to 17 to receive a vaccine shot. Following the arrival of vaccines, the batch must go through a series of examinations. Citizens may start to receive vaccine shots mid-September. Though teenagers from 12 to 17 years old have the highest priority, citizens of 18 to 22 years old can also register on the platform. In Malaysia, the pandemic situation is still serious. Therefore, Malaysia Tima's 20th anniversary was celebrated through a video conference. More than 300 Tima members meet online to share their best wishes and thoughts. Take a look. As Malaysia Tima enters its 20th year, medical workers in different states meet online. There are also people's best wishes from Taiwan. Uh, all TIMA members, uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate Malaysia branch of TIMA celebrating its 20th anniversary. Though we have the uh, pandemic, it doesn't mean that we forego and don't do this uh, anniversary celebration. Whatever we have to do, we still have to go on. Huh? If we connect TIMA members and the world with online technology, we can help many patients. The thing is hand in hand we stand together. The celebration supports the frontline medical workers. Physical therapist Chao Chong Da has fallen ill to COVID-19. He shares his thoughts. Many people do not know how they contracted the virus, including me. During my quarantine period, I did not have anything to do, so I calmed down. I was grateful that I could cultivate myself. Through video conference, the medical volunteers encourage each other. In the face of the pandemic, the unity is even more important. In Taiwan, Northern District City Police Association's members use their holiday to help with gardening at Cixi Nehu Liu Eisong office. These first responders received Cixi's herbal tea from volunteers during the outbreak and wanted to help out with the planting of a herb, leguminose, at Cixi grounds. <laughs> Leguminosa needs a lot of water. After organizing and watering the roots, they plant it on the hill. <laughs> Holding a shovel and grass seedlings, they have to get rid of rocks. Wearing city volunteer uniforms, their police officers, firefighters, or their families. <laughs> My father is a police officer. He often mentions Zhiji. I wanted to come to today's herb planting activity. After doing it, I realized it is not an easy task. It requires endurance and physical strength. In fact, we are the ones who benefit from it, because during the work process, our bodies and minds are very calm. Although we sweat, we are very healthy. We also use this opportunity to meet Zigi brothers and sisters and enhance our friendship. Coming to this ground today, I feel very comfortable. The environment is very good and the air is fresh. The work takes practice. They bring tools and improve their work efficiency. I've been here many times. I usually do not do as much as everyone did today, but I brought a shovel and did my share. At Siji Guan's in Hu office, everyone works with one heart and one mind to remove the old electric pole. They join hands to carry out another task in Siji. 
As part of the COVID prevention measure, Hualien City Recycling and Education Center opens for half day for sorting recyclables. The pandemic has caused 80% increase of recyclables in many recycling points. Now volunteers are working even harder to protect the environment. The recycling truck hosts three people on each mission to collect recyclables. Coming back from the United States and living in Hualien for six years, Chen Weixian goes out on recycling missions five days a week. Recycling is very direct. We sweat under the sun and carry heavy objects. It feels very nice. It's like I am not wasting any time. Volunteers made the trip to different recycling points in Fengling. After being greeted with a large amount of recyclables, Siji's sister said that though women volunteers have less strength, they improved over time by going out on recycling missions. As we don't have many people here in Fengling, it is not easy for us to run these recycling points for 10 years. Indigenous people recognize our ideals and are willing to collect recyclables for us. Otherwise, it will be very unfortunate if we can't continue this. Utilizing the art of organizing, volunteers filled up the three trucks with recyclables. The team works in unison, recycling while protecting our environment. To implement environmental protection in Hong Kong, city volunteers actively encourage residents to recycle resources in their own communities. They set up a mobile recycling point from time to time for residents to recycle more conveniently. Residents of Lam Phong Sen Chuan, who is built on the hillside, have to go up and down steep slopes when going out. It is even more difficult for them to carry recyclables. So the volunteers satisfy their needs for a temporary recycling point. There are more elderly people here. Some of them have mobility issues, and some may not have helpers. So the recycling point is more convenient for the residents. Elderly people or children here to do recycling on weekends or holidays if they can't travel abroad. This is the second time for Ziji to set up a mobile recycling point in Nanfeng Sentren. Through this recycling activity, I can allow my kids to know that we have actually created a lot of things that are not environmentally friendly every day. If we throw out these recyclables as trash, they will produce too much garbage. We have received a lot of small electrical appliances, such as fans and books. Because these things are quite heavy, residents do not want to carry them far to recycle. As we happen to collect recyclables here, many residents took the advantage to take them down. Volunteers are pleased to see that residents have raised their environmental awareness so that recyclables are going to the right place, reducing the burden on the planet. Under intense summer sun, city volunteers in Tainan and Kaohsiung loaded hundreds of jeans folding beds and more than 6,000 blankets into a shipping container for Haiti relief. Here's the footage. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.